Okay, I'm going to show you some more techniques using the same uh, strategies that I use for making a sepia tone print. So I'm just going to jump right into it here and go to Image Adjustment U Saturation. And with this image, we're going to create a nice sepia tone. And if you remember, the numbers were 25, 25 for an average sepia. You can bring this down a bit, but let's stick with 25 for the sake of this image. Then we're going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Just going to add lots of noise. And this is exactly how I presented this image. Uh, or these are the strategies I use for this image in their wedding album. I think I would lighten this. And that's probably, yeah, it is what I did. I lightened the areas and the mid-tones by opening the curves palette and bringing the image up like that. You see? So it's much brighter and I could easily go in and just dodge a little bit just so that the center of action, the center of attention is going to pop out a little bit more. Very simple. Very, very simple. Sepia add noise for a very strong uh, impressionistic uh, looking print. Here we have the same couple. This time they're in the water. So we got that uh, blue, watery, Caribbean look going on. So we're going to go to U saturation again, but this time we're not going to go to sepia print. Let's pick a blue. This is exactly what I did with this shot for their wedding album. Um, you know what? I'm going to add a little soft focus to this. Needs a bit of softening. Oh, there's the soft art. I'm going to run the soft art. Hopefully it works. This is James's old soft focus action. He uh, has replaced it since then with the uh, Nobs Hodgesoft. But uh, I like both of them. I find they both work really, really well. He's a little partial to the Hodgesoft. But, uh, you know, I'm sitting on the fence. I'm happy with both of them. So we're going to adjust the Gaussian Blur. That's part of that action. And the next step, of course, is the history brush. Wherever we erase, depending on the opacity, right here, will determine how much we erase to. And we don't want to get rid of too much because we want it to have that soft, flowy look. Now you can do this. Go into Blur, Motion Blur. And you can get your angle going in the direction that the motion is supposed to be going, right? So we don't want to go opposite the grain. We want to go with the grain. So if you... Uh, that blurs it almost too much. If you adjust your distance and your angle, it's a little bit tricky here. I'm using the uh, up-down arrow now to adjust the numbers on the angle. Uh, let's go with that. Now, of course, that looks doesn't look good. I mean, it looks like, you know what, it looks awful, right? So we're going to go back in history, click on his motion blur for my history, history brush into the history state, wherever I erase that's where the uh, that state will reveal itself. I'm going to use a low opacity. Just give it a little bit of blur. Some blur, like as if it's raining down water on our little lovebirds there. So we're going to enhance the effect of the motion. Simple, simple tools. You know, when you think about it, it's just ridiculously simple. Most of the tools available to you in Photoshop are like right there. So once we do that, we can go into uh, Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Give it that nice painterly feeling. You don't have to add noise, but I remember in this particular image, I did when I created it for their wedding album. So let's just look at this. Okay, we've got lots going on there. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to show you this. James is going to kill me for this, but use your selection, rectangular marquee tool with a zero feather. This is an old strategy, one of the strategies that we were totally captivated with when we first got into Photoshop. Create a selection, and you'll see there's only one layer. So if you go into Layer, New Layer via Copy, which is Control J, so I'm going to go to Control J right now. It's going to create a copy of that selection only. And of course, this is this is old stuff for some of you guys. You're probably laughing right now. Are you ready to bot me through the monitor here? So we're going to go to Monitor in our Blend Mode. I mean uh, Normal. And I usually bring the distance down to spread up size, adjust the size for a nice drop shadow. You know, it's corny, it's, but it's cute. So I'm going to flatten the image now. 
And that's, uh, yeah, that's a strategy that we used to use all the time when we first, first got into uh, digital was making selections and all these funky borders all the way around it. So it's good to know. It's really good to know. Okay, this image here has already been worked on. And here's the original. So I'm going to show you what I did I'm using the same strategies again. So this image has got problems. And now I did get one that was properly exposed. Uh, yeah, I did this one on purpose. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I, I underexposed it on purpose because I wanted to specifically do this. That's it. So we go to, uh, let's go look at our levels. And you can tell. Yee, there's no highlights. Maybe we'll bring them up just a bit. Not too much. So you can see there's a lot of funky colors going on in there. So we're going to go image adjustment, use saturation. We're not going to touch colorize. Just going to really throw out the uh, saturation. That's all I did. Go to history, back one, click on the history palette, click on the history palette, and then start erasing certain areas in there to get a cool effect. Wow, that is too much. I'm getting flashbacks to the 70s now. And uh, it won't be exact, but you know what? I think what I did was I went to image adjustment, then I went to colorize, and I beefed up the blues. That's not blue, that's purple. There we go. Go back to state, and we're going to use the same strategy and beef up the blues. Of course, we can go to burn tool and simply enhance it all that way. And wrong image. Let's go Control L or Levels. I'm going to beef it up a little more. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to dodge the bride just a bit. And I'm going to go in and overall image saturation. It's not exact, but this is what I did to get to this. These are some of the strategies. You know, sometimes it's freestyle, and you just don't remember what you, what exactly it was you did to uh, make it happen. So I'm going to run the software on it right now. And the software is running slow because it's a bigger image. I forgot to downsize it, so uh, maybe I'll just talk about James right now. Nah, no, I'll talk about somebody else. Let's. Oh, there it's ready. Oh, it's just about the gossip. Okay, here we go. So we got, again, history straight. I'm going to erase some of that away. Going to do a little bit of noise. Maybe not that much for this particular image. So I know I didn't add that much. I just added a little more than normal. And of course, I did the rectangular thing that I just showed you a while ago. And, oh, it's not positioned properly. So you can grab it and move it. Don't know if you knew that. Control J. See, we got a new layer. Bingo. Drop shadow. Oh, normal. Distance down. Spread, size, the old strategy of creating a. Let's uh, flatten that first. Well, that was the actual image that the couple got. I mean, I didn't do it exactly the same, but you get the idea using the same strategies over and over and over again. So I hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.